Hello YouTube, I'm a friend of Mr. Clean, just working with him to make this circuits video. We're, today we're going to be looking at higher order circuits and looking at higher order um, circuit operators. So, um, if we read the question, it says assume that the desired output voltage for two circuits, which are not shown, are given by V1 equaling to B over P plus A times U of T, which is the step response um, with a low pass operator, and V2 is equaling to BP over P plus A times P plus B times the unit step function, which is the function we'll be examining today. Um, we're going to write out the equations for V1 and V2, just we're going to focus on V2 for now because we're looking at higher order circuits. And a higher order basically just means that the uh, P will end up being squared in the denominator, but this is just a P factored out. So we're just going to examine that for now. So uh, let's jump right into it. Um, so we're going to start off by rewriting the V2 equation, again the equation we're paying attention to, we're ignoring V1, by rewriting it as V2 equaling to BP times the unit step function, just moving the unit step function into the numerator, over P plus A times P plus B. So if we notice, what we want to do first is take the derivative of the unit step function, which is just the delta function. So then we can just get rid of that P in the numerator by rewriting this as um, equaling to a b times the delta function over p plus a times p plus b. Then we can go off and start operation. So before that, we want to uh, separate this fraction into uh, two separate fractions by, say, by stating a b over p plus a. Notice that we just took b and p plus a and moved it into its own little set of parentheses and multiplying that by delta function over p plus b. Um, you can multiply these two fractions together to see that they come out to what we got before, which is b times delta function over p plus a times p plus b to see if that works. Um, so if we go over further, we take the b and over p plus a and move it down there, and then we operate, you know, we do a low pass operator onto the delta function. So typically the low pass operator looks like e to the negative bt, taking this constant b in the denominator and moving it to the exponential function. Um, and making a negative times the integral from zero and from negative infinity to t of e to the b times delta um, delta of alpha times the alpha. Alpha is just a dummy constant that we um, put in place of t since um, generally when we do a low pass operator we want the upper bound to be t so we just use alpha so we don't be redundant but moving on um, so we are examining the uh, delta that's a delta function sorry I kinda drew it wrong but that's a delta function. Um, a unique property of the delta function is that the delta function can only be examined at time equals zero. So we can set, in this case, alpha equal to zero. So when we set alpha equal to zero, we end up getting e to the zero. There should be an alpha there, but it should be b alpha. So when you have an exponential function raised to the power of zero, you just get one. So this just becomes the integral of um, these, you know, the uh, impulse function. Or the delta function. So the integral of the delta function of alpha is just equal to the unit step function m of alpha which is then set equal to the unit step function of t because remember what we said alpha is just a dummy variable and the dummy variable represents time and time in this case just is t. Therefore we can rewrite the equation again to get b over p plus a times the e, um, the exponential function, which we got from our last equation, um, e to the negative bt times the integral, which end up being the unit step function, so we multiply this by the unit step function. And then continuing forward, we can factor out, we can pull out the b, because b is just a constant value, and just have a low pass operator of 1 over p plus a, which ends up being e, um, e to the negative at times the unit step function, directly pulling that out of the integral, changing our bound to from negative infinity to t to 0 to t, um, that can be explained in more detail later, but for now we're just going to skip a few steps and directly pull the unit step function out of the integral. So when we do that again, the bounds change from negative infinity to t to zero from, to uh, zero to t. Or it should be, but going moving on, we are able to have now the integral of zero to t of e to a t minus b t, which then can we we can rewrite by pulling at the t in the exponent to um e to the t times a minus b dt, just to make the integration visually simpler. 
So after we take the integral of the exponential function, we simply pull out the uh, constant and move it out of the integral um, to divide and to end up getting b over a minus b. Again, we just took the a minus b in the exponent, integrate the exponential function, and then divide the integral, which is a constant value, so you can pull out the integral, out into a, to get b over a minus b. The b was the constant that we pulled out first before we did the integration. Times e to the a, negative at times the unit step function times our value of the integral. So after you take this integral, you end up getting e to the a minus bt minus 1. We got that by applying our bounds. Moving on, simplifying this further by, multi by distributing the e to the negative at into the brackets there, we end up getting b over a minus b times the unit step function times e to the negative bt minus e, e to the negative at, which is our final answer. And there we go.